Well, g'day guys, it's Sam here from Build Not Bought and today I'm in New South Wales. Now, I'm only here for a little bit, but in the short space I've been here, everyone's telling me, Sam, you gotta do Jamie's 79 series. So, I've got it behind me and it's a rig. Let's get into it. A couple of comp trucks just rocked up, so sorry if you hear that in the background. All right, so the bull bar is a PSR bull bar. Now that's steel and it's housing a 12,000 pound winch with a factor 55 hook. Pretty standard these days, a lot of guys are running those sort of hooks. It's all about that modern, uh, futuristic technology, you could say. Now, Power Vision Sounds made their own grill. Oh, obviously the elephant in the room, the wrap. Now this is actually a wrap, it's not a paint job and it's called a deep space wrap. So that gives it that quite sort of characteristic look that everyone knows this truck for. Headlights, so these are a retrofit headlight. They're obviously made by Power Vision Sound as well. Um, PSR, I've also done this flare. Now that's not a bolt-on flare, it's actually the whole guard is a replacement to give it that wider, deeper stance so you can sort of fit the bigger tires in, obviously with the portals as well, we'll get to that. But that's all custom and there's not many like that in Australia. Clear view mirrors of course and PSR, I've also got the rock sliders on here as well. Now, towards the top, We'll look at the canopy later, but on the roof rack, it's a Rhino roof rack, but it's got uh, Jamie's own backbone on there, which houses a whole bunch of steady lights. So it's got their side lights, a couple of light bars each side, and then a massive one on the front as well. So we'll keep working back and look at the canopy. So looking at the back end now, it's a custom canopy and tray setup. And on top there, we've got a Drifter four wheel drive rooftop hard shell tent. Now, another cool feature of this truck is the stacks. So the exhaust system comes through and there's one each side of the tent there and it comes up through that headboard on the tray. So that's pretty trick. Uh, we'll get into the canopy in a second, but I wanna talk about this submarine, no, simmarine, simmarine. <laughs> so this simmarine unit pretty much is like a smart monitoring system for everything on this four-wheel drive. Now, it not only does batteries, voltages, amps and all that, it can measure the temperatures of your diffs, it measures the water, capacity in the water tanks, just pretty much everything to do with this truck is all accessible from here. So pretty an awesome system. Electronically wise, there's three AGM deep cycle batteries under the tray and that powers everything in the canopy in here. We'll um, get into the main bit inside. So there's a Dometic upright fridge. So that's in there, whole bunch of drawers and stuff. Now there's all these lights. The canopy lights actually have like a dim setting. So you can sort of dim the lights. There's also the orange setting, which a lot of guys are using now to keep the bugs away. So that's all in there. Fire extinguisher, of course. And there's, um, well, you can, you can do the rear lights from here too. There you go. So there's a whole lot of buttons for all the lights. Quite a slim line setup as well. It's not switches. It's like touch screen sort of button style. Um, this is pretty awesome in here. There's a door on each side, but on this side in particular, He's got a coffee machine and it pulls out and everything. Look at that. So if you're into your espressos, then there you go. And there's also lighting in all the drawers. So there's a switch there. You can't see it at the moment, but there's also lighting in there as well. Looks like an inverter. Is that an inverter? All right, there's an inverter back there as well. So that gives you a 240 volt power. And I've noticed on the back, there's a plug which you can plug it into the wall if you want to keep the thing charged when you're at home. All right, keep moving around the back. Obviously on this custom tray, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on around here. Here's that power hook that I was showing before so you can plug it into the wall at home. It's got a rear drawer which has its own automatic lights in there and there's actually a couple of power sockets here as well so you can put things here and charge them if you need. Um, rear winch, so the rear winch as well which obviously has a factory 55 hook on there. Uh, water tap, so this is powered into the, or plumbed into the water tank and it's pressurized as well so it's actually got a little water pump so you can sort of have showers and anything you want out of there as well. Um, around this side, there's just another sort of cubby hole. A lot of gear can be stored in here as well. There's a bit of electrics going on. So the whole battery management system is run through a CTEC. So that kind of manages all the charging of those three batteries underneath. Um, in this side of the canopy, it's more just storage. There's a couple of uh, drawers here, or one large drawer for all your camping gear. And then obviously the lights in there and a heap of space. So it's pretty much set up for any sort of touring setup you want to go on to. It's really customizable, so there's a lot of room left in here. It's not sort of built in to one setting. You can kind of change it up how you want, so I really like that. Oh, it's pretty high on this side. Oh, the last thing on this tray here is a little bit of a switch panel here, so you can control the side lights, rear lights, all sorts of bits like that. There's a charger there as well. There's the tap for the filling up the water tank, 
And this antenna here, you've probably seen on the other side there is an antenna which is for the GME radio, the UHF. But this one here is sort of a 4G antenna so you can get internet for the head unit inside, which we'll get to next. We'll jump inside and have a look. This is where things get really special on this car. All right, inside this, what was once a boring 79 series into basically a, almost a Ferrari. And I say Ferrari because starting with the steering wheel, it's a 200 series sort of core steering wheel, but they've actually shaped it sort of a one-off shape like a Ferrari style. So it's got those sort of harder edges. It's quite nice. You'll never see that on a 79. The whole interior, obviously they have normally the gray look. So what Jamie's done is sort of painted the whole dash black. He's got a suede roof put on there, Department of Interior uh, roof console, Department of Interior, hello? <laughs> Center console, <laughs> turn that off. So that's that uh, GME radio as well, of course. So the head unit as well, it's sort of like a Google Android sort of head unit. So you've got your Spotify, you've got maps, you've got anything you could ever want that was pretty much on a phone you can have now in your car. So that's in there, it's all hooked up through the steering wheel controls as well. All got power windows. Pretty much this whole interior is set up to be quite luxurious. Now it's got the Recaro seats front and rear. In the back, it's just a nice sort of simple setup. The actual center console runs all the way back and you've actually got cup holders in the rear there for the passengers and then a couple in the front here. So a lot of sort of comforts that you don't normally get in a 79 is what you see in this particular car. There's also a rear vision camera. So the rear vision mirror here does sort of work through the camera. Because you've got the canopy on the back, there's a little camera that's always running and it's up there uh, so you can see what's going on behind you. And it also doubles as a dash cam in a way. So it's constantly recording. So if you have any incidents on the road, there's some record of that. All right, so I think it's time now to look under the bonnet of this thing and then we'll get to suspension. Under the bonnet of this thing now, I'm on the high side here, but it's pretty much, engine-wise, it's pretty standard. So it's a standard uh, turbo diesel that Toyota put in here from factory. Um, there's an ARB compressor over there for the, is it lockers? No, for the, for the portals, that's interesting. So there's an ARB locker, no, ARB compressor for the portals. Well, why does it need air? <laughs> oh, air hubs, that's pretty sick. As a four inch snorkel coming through, that's PSR as well. Um, and it's just had a chip and tune exhaust um, and that's pretty much all it's done. It doesn't need a load of power because through the portals, it gets the gearing changed up so you can run the bigger tires, etc. So ratio wise, power wise, it's pretty standard. All right, the last thing to look at is suspension. Now, you may think this thing's pretty massive and it is, but it's actually only got a two inch suspension lift. That is because of the portals in here. So it's got the Marks 4 drive portal kits front and rear, what that does is give your sort of hub a step down to where the diff is. So it keeps everything tucked up, but drops the wheel down. Now that means it can run 37 inch tires. So this has all been done pre-registration. So that's on there on the front. The rear is actually a J-Max coil conversion rear end. So gone are the old leaf springs. Also with these diffs, it's factory lock. So these 79s come out with the factory electrical lockers front and rear, so they're still on there. Now, being this J-Max rear end and portals, it's sort of the only of its kind. Now, there was a bit of an overlap there with legislation, so Jamie's actually got one of the only ones in Australia, probably the first and last, to be able to have the portals and the coil conversion, so that's pretty awesome. Let's hope it doesn't get written off, ever. <laughs> The handbrake's also improved, so it's got a drum on the uh, drive shaft now, so it's not got the stupid bloody brake handbrakes that go inside the drums on the rear calipers. Now that's all moved to under there on the drive shaft, so it gives a lot nicer handbrake. So it's not got that typical 79 handbrake crap that people hate, so let's fix that. The front's actually also got a wild 4x4 crosslink setup. Now that's normally something that you see on patrols or 80 series or something like that, so it's on the 79 here. And what that is, is sort of a, a pin you can put in on road and it behaves like a standard 79, but once you pull the pin out, it kind of has a cross arm and it gives it a lot more flex off road. The other cool thing with these portals, it's also kind of helps with your brake upgrade as well. So all these portal axles come with 200 series style brakes. So that's a decent upgrade from the 79s. Looking at wheels and tires as well, they've got the grid off-road rims, and this also has 37 inch Neato mud grapplers on there. Also with these front hubs, uh, they're kind of an air locking system, so that compressor in the engine bay means you can lock your hubs in through air actuation in the engine bay, no, or not in the engine bay, in the interior. Normally you gotta jump out and turn the manual hubs, that's sort of what's common on a lot of patrols in these 79s as well, but you can do it from inside the cab, which is pretty handy. So that's sort of a pretty mad setup on here. The whole thing has sort of been 
built around that portal. It's, it's one of those things that in the future, a lot of these 79s are gonna be running these portals, but right now, it's sort of new territory for a lot of these guys. So it's pretty awesome to get one of these on the rig rundown series. So I guess the last thing to do now is take this thing for a drive, see how it feels, and then we're gonna get Jamie to jump in and do his challenges. In the big 79. So this is the second 79 that I've ever driven. The only one I have done on this rig rundown is Jace's 79. And that was a completely different car. Had a whole lot of power, but not much going on with the suspension. This is on portals. But first thing I must say is the interior is amazing. I can feel the carbon fiber on the steering wheel straight away. Or in low, low range. Yeah, well. <laughs> now I did notice right now, and also as we were driving here, the sound, because the, the stacks are up high and the exhaust is out the back, it kind of has like, you can hear that note just subtly, but it's not real droney because it's up above you. So, oh, he's trying to talk to us and the mic's off again. Hello? What? What? So my first experience with these portals, obviously, and I must say, it still feels like quite comfortable suspension. And that's the whole idea. Watching this thing going across all the terrain, especially where we are today, it's quite rocky. And um, it has so much clearance. Like so many times I would have diffed out, but this thing just crawls around it. And it still has that sort of two inch lift. Like that's insane. Now being a standard engine, just with a bit of a tune, it hasn't got a huge amount of torque, but definitely when the revs come up to around 1800, 2000, you can feel a pull when those turbos start spooling up. So I think it's just perfect for what this is. You know, it's just comfortable. It doesn't need a load of torque because it's not geared like that. Obviously with the axles and the reductions in each hub, it's sort of worked out. So the big tires act as if it still had the standard size um, tires on them. I think we'll find a nice bit of an open area to do this 100 metre sprint and we'll get Jamie into his four challenges. <laughs> I don't know. It's my pants. <laughs> All right, so we've got Jamie here, the owner of the PVS rig or this classic 79. Now, rig rundown. You haven't seen these on my channel yet, have you? No. So, only, only the diesel. What I do, because it's road registered, I have four challenges that I put every car through to sort of bit of a tally board just to see where people sit. Bit of fun, it's nothing scientific. Um, but the first challenge is a 100 meter sprint. So I'm just gonna step out 100 meters and then hammer drops. I just start a little stopwatch and you pretty much just run it. So standard motor, can't expect too much from that. No. We'll see what you can do. See what happens. <laughs> then the second challenge is my comfort challenge. Now what I do is put a little cup of water on the bonnet and you go to drive up to 50 k's an hour, brake again over a bit of terrain and just see how much water comes out. Like I said, it's not very scientific. So mm. hopefully okay. uh, you're not too bad with that. Obviously. Not, not a massive lift, it's all in the uh, geometry of those portals, isn't it? Yeah, so right. hopefully it should be all right. Mm. Then we did the fuel economy, so I filled up at the start, we'll fill up when we finish and see what it does. So what's your estimate on that? 2025. Around. So hopefully we can sit around. That's pretty like standard for a lot of other yeah. cars I've done. So hopefully you'll be sort of in the middle there. And then the final challenge is the flex ramp challenge. Now, we don't have a flex ramp here, but there's a load of rocks. So what do you say we find a rock? I think so, yeah, plenty. Get up on it and see if we can get a wheel in the air or something, and that'll be sort of the flex point, and then yep. I'll just measure Done. how high that rear wheel is. So yep. let's find some space and get into it. All right, so I couldn't pack a flex ramp with me, obviously, in the trailer. So we're going to start with this rock, but we'll see what happens. If it's not enough flex, then we'll have to keep moving around, find something that works. So just improvising a bit at the moment. Well, there's a rock here too on the front. <laughs> oh! That's pretty good. The wheel's pretty much right. Go back a little bit, a bit more. Crawl it. I could probably push you over from here. All right, see if I remembered my tape measure. So ha ha we need to get creative and sort of work out the difference. The angle. So that's about 500 yeah. to there. Man, that's like 25. So that's 525 mil. Are you happy with that? All right, we'll go with that. 525. Now with that super accurate flex out the way, it's time to get onto the sprint. Yeah. Alright guys, we're about to do the 100 metre sprint.
931. Let's not do it again. <laughs> 931. Oh my god, uh, you missed it, but he almost. Oh, the back wheels came off the ground because he missed the corner. <laughs> Holy hell. Woo! How did that be kill? How did that fall breaking? Yeah, as soon as I did that jump, it was like. The back wheel came off the ground. I was like, don't roll, don't roll. <laughs> anyway, 9.31, average time. Good. Be happy with that, let's not do that again. I'm happy with that. Alright, so the next one's just the uh, comfort challenge, which is, you only got to go 50 k's an hour, so not too hectic. Cool. Pretty much do the same running, we might go to this side a bit, a bit of terrain, yep. and we'll just put a little cup on the bonnet, you can go from here actually. And then um, once you get to 50, you just brake again and we'll see how much comes out. <laughs> challenge on the bonnet. How's that? Stop right where we were. That was that 50? Yeah. Okay. About a quarter came out because you measured. There you go. 80%. Alright, the next one. We've done the flex amp, so normally you go to the flex after this, but we did that at the start, so I don't know where I'm going to stick that. So last thing, we'll head home, fill up, see what the economy is, and that's it. Done deal. Let's go. Alright, so first stop for the day, obviously for the economy challenge. We need to fill up before we even get started on this, so Jamie, straight to the top, dude. On it all the way up. All right. <laughs> Alright, we're back at the server. How many k's did we do today? Uh, 81. 81 k's, alright. Alright, that's full. No, that's full. So how many litres? 14.4. 14 14.4. And is it how many k's? 80, 81. 81 k's. 17.7 litres per 100. Did good today. Alright, there we go. 17.7 litres per 100. That's the last one of the challenges. So. We'll go to the leaderboard now and see where it all ended up. All right, now taking a look at the leaderboard, it's been a while since we've seen this thing, so let's have a look where Jamie stands. Now in the sprint challenge, a devastating result of 9.31, but not too much to expect from that standard engine. In the comfort challenge, 80%, right mid-range there with uh, the portals and the way the suspension set up, a good result. The flex ramp challenge, now I don't know how accurate this one was, but came in third with a 525 mil and of course rounding out the economy challenge with 17.7 litres per hundred smacking them straight in the middle there well thanks again guys for joining me for another rig rundown episode it's good to see another road registered card so we could have a look at these challenges again make sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys in the next episode Please click the button to your left if you want to go and check out the latest merchandise we have on our website. If you missed last week's episode, click down below to see it. And most importantly, on the far left, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.